previously on Banlist Roulette. I'm still of the opinion that it definitely should never come back, but that's just my opinion. Let's see where Max C ends up. Well, thank fuck that didn't happen. What's going on guys, it's Simo. So if the ban list set to release no sooner than April 2nd, that means that we could be getting a brand new ban list as early as next week. And you know what that means, it's time for ban list roulette. So basically, if you guys have never seen this series before, I'd highly recommend checking out the previous episodes. But what we do is we take cards that might have the chance to get banned or might have the chance to get limited and throw them on to the ban list roulette wheel to see what their fate is going to be on the upcoming April. April ban list because sometimes when Konami makes decisions they seem just completely out of nowhere and it seems like it might just be left to chance so we're gonna go ahead and see if that holds true today but if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss a single upload and if you really love ban list roulette or any of the other content that I produce on this channel consider supporting me on patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member because it's thanks to people like Mosley and Sebastian that I'm able to bring you this content on a daily basis so if you're interested, hit the join button down below or check out the links in the description. But without further ado, let's play some Banlist Roulette. So kicking things off, we're going to start with Sky Strikers. Now Sky Strikers is a deck that's been around for quite some time now. I believe it's been the best deck for the better part of a year. And a lot of people would agree that it's time for either the deck to get severely hit or the deck's time has come. So there's a couple ways we could go about this. I think the first and most prominent way of hitting the deck would be hitting Engage. Engage is like the biggest consistency card and hitting Engage would kind of just cripple the deck entirely depending on where it rests on the ban list, so let's go ahead and see what the wheel has in store. Sky Striker Engage is going to get banned. Wow, that would just completely cripple that deck. And honestly, I think a lot of us would be okay with that. Now, there are some other points at which you could hit the Sky Striker deck as well, one of which is Sky Striker Ace Kagari. This card is actually currently limited in the OCG, just being the central point of recursion for the deck. It's so powerful being able to access any of your cards in the graveyard. And a lot of people would argue that if Kagari gets hit in some form, it would definitely be a way to hit the deck without completely killing it. So let's go ahead and see where Kagari ends up on the April ban list. Kagari would be going to two. So we have Engage Band and two Kagari. Well, frankly, if Engage gets banned, I think the deck is kind of just completely out of luck. But two Kagari, you know, it's a slight hit, but I don't really think it would do a whole lot. The third and final card I want to talk about with Sky Striker is Multi Roll. Because Multi Roll is just this insane spellbook of judgment esque card for Sky Striker that basically allows it to recur so much advantage every single turn. I mean, you can basically just dump all your cards and then just go like, plus four on your end phase and then you can use cards on your opponent's turn and get cards back during their end phase like the card is just absolutely bonkers and some people are arguing that this card should be hit as well and I think there's a good justification for that so let's see where it ends up on this upcoming list. And multi roll would be going to two as well. So two multi roll, two Kagari, engage band. Yeah, the deck would pretty much just still be screwed. But moving on from Sky Striker, I do want to discuss one of the other top tier decks, Salamangre. Now, the thing is, when it comes to Salamangre, it's kind of weird to evaluate it because it just came out not that long ago. And when you see a deck like Sky Striker in comparison, that's basically been the top deck for a year, and yet Salamangre came out and people are already begging for stuff to get hit, even though the deck has only been legal for like, over a month, I don't really think that's fair. And honestly, I don't think Konami's gonna hit Salamangrate until like after the national championship, because that way it'll have its fair time to shine. And then they might give it some slight hits, kind of like how they've done to Sky Striker in the past. We'll just have to see, but I don't really think Salamangrate's gonna hit too much. One card a lot of people are discussing should get hit is Salamangrate Gazelle. You could hit the card, reduce the deck's consistency, even though it'd still be able to do a lot of things. Let's go ahead and see what the wheel has in store for Salamangrate Gazelle. 
Well, Salamangra Gazelle is staying exactly where it is, and quite frankly, I don't think it's going anywhere either. I guess one other card we could discuss is Lady Debug, because Lady Debug is like a Salamangra card without being in the archetype. I mean, it just searches Cybers monsters. It's basically a Stratos in that respect, and the card just helps enable the deck by being the correct typing for Baylinx and enabling just combos like crazy. So some people would say, you know, it hits Salamangra without like directly hitting Salamangra. You'd still have stuff like Flame Buffalo and things like that. Not to mention we get Cyanet Mining coming out in Dark Neostorm, which is like basically an adequate replacement that actually has a little bit higher risk to play. So I don't know, Lady Debug could be on here. So let's go ahead and see where she ends up. Wow, Lady Debug is apparently getting banned. Man, banned Engage, banned Debug. I mean, Salamangra is still playable, but wow, this wheel is ruthless. But moving on to one of the other strongest decks of the format, Danger Thunder Dragon. Now, there's a lot of different cards we could hit in this deck, and a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about in this video are cards that just enable a lot of the degenerate things that this deck can do. First and foremost is Saryuja Skull Dread. Now, personally, I don't think this card should be banned, but I think when you have this card in multiple, is when it starts getting highly abused because there's zero once per turn clause anywhere and there's so many ways like with dangers and all these other things that this card can just get really out of hand so I personally would like to see it limited but obviously I have zero control in this instance so let's see where the wheel leaves with Saryuja. Oh, well, sorry, you're just getting limited after all. Now, another card that people say should get hit is Thunder Dragon Colossus. Personally, like, yeah, the card is just really oppressive, but I don't think it's worth getting hit because if you just leave, like, mono Thunder Dragon as a deck, like, taking all the dangers and stuff out of it, I don't think the deck is, like, too bad. And it's kind of weird to say, but maybe just because it's relative to Danger Thunder Dragon, pure Thunder Dragon is really not that big a deal. But the people want it, so let's see where Colossus ends up. Colossus is staying right at three. Now, another group of monsters that's causing a lot of controversy are the Dangers, specifically Danger Nessie, Danger Jackalope, and Danger Tsuchinoko. These three cards are kind of the reason that these decks are able to just perform at such high levels, but it's also bolstering a lot of other strategies and enabling them to play at higher tiers of competitive play as well. I did an entire video about this, but the thing is, I think a lot of people are really sick of these cards. So let's go ahead and see where Nessie, Jackalope, and Tsuchinoko end up for our April format. Wow, a limitation to Nessie, Jackalope, and Tsuchinoko. Honestly, that's not like the worst idea because like it still could be played in like a more pure, you could still have like a kind of decent danger engine even with all these cards at one without it being just really, really reckless. So I don't know, I guess that's just something to think about. Now I wanna wrap up this video by discussing some of the more degenerate cards that a lot of controversy is surrounding and talk about where these cards should end up. So first and foremost is Elder Entity as a thought or also in addition to that, the rank up magic quick play spell that allows you to summon that. Now, both of these cards are interchangeable because as a thought during your opponent's turn is just one of the most oppressive things you can actually do. And the thing is, the quick play spell is what enables this. If you as a thought during your own turn, the only thing you're really shutting off for the most part is monster effects. And there's things you can do prior to an as a thought being summoned on you to kind of help prevent it or to stop it from being summoned in the first place. It's no different than if you're trying to summon or pretty much trying to stop another big play your opponent might do. But doing it on your opponent's turn, especially when they only have like one action to respond is just completely wrong. And in addition to that, with the rank up magic quick play spell, when we get Dingirsu or Long Gearsu, whatever the new Xyz monster is for the Orcus deck, they're gonna be able to use the rank up magic quick play spell to go into stuff like VFD, and it's gonna get out of hand really quick. So I think one of these has to go, and honestly, maybe like both of them should go, but realistically, I think the quick play spell is kind of like the bigger problem here. But as a thought, could also be arguably just as degenerate. So let's go ahead and see what this has has in store for them. Wow, both of them getting banned. And honestly, I think people would be 
pretty okay with that. Now, another card that's been causing a lot of controversy is Artifact Scythe. And Artifact Scythe is creating this really unhealthy dynamic where if someone goes first and opens it, they just summon Scythe from Sanctum, and it really just shuts off pretty much anyone from being able to play the game. And it's a little bit different than something like Dimensional Barrier, because Dimensional Barrier only does a specific type of monsters, not to mention it can't do links, where Scythe can hit links, and so many decks rely on the extra deck. I mean, yeah, you can make an argument like, oh, Monarchs don't need it, or like, True Draco doesn't need it, or Guru Control doesn't need it, but like, that doesn't justify a card existing that shuts down, like, several summoning mechanics that are built into this game. I just think it's kind of an unhealthy card, and I think a lot of people are starting to agree with that. So let's see where Scythe ends up on the April ban list. Wow, Scythe is gonna get the axe too. Man, the wheel is actually being very gracious this time around. So another card a lot of people are talking about getting hit on the ban list is Phantom Sky Blaster. Phantom Sky Blaster is one of those cards that's a token generator that pretty much is just not really aging well into the Link era just because it's able to summon so many tokens. Phantom Sky Blaster plus one other monster means you basically have offensive scapegoat and that's just really, really ridiculous. I could turn into a Saryu that can just turn into really whatever you want and I think a lot of people are saying that's too unhealthy for the game I would kind of tend to agree with that even though it does eat up your normal summon it's a very powerful normal summon at that and I think a lot of people are saying it's time to go along with all the other token generators that have been banned in the past so let's go ahead and see where Sky Blaster ends up Wow, Sky Blaster getting the axe as well. What is going on? Now, another card I've mentioned before that isn't exactly too bad at the moment is Summon Sorceress. I definitely feel this card needs to get banned at some point because even though it's not that bad now, you see it in stuff like, you know, Danger Orcist and Danger Thunder, but it's not like being seen in a bunch of other of the control decks because you don't really need it. I think if we go back to a very combo-centric oriented meta, Summon Sorceress gets out of hand too fast, not to mention, Eventually, we're gonna have to get Needle Fiber, and Needle Fiber and Summon Sorcerers cannot exist in the same format. Otherwise, it's just going to get completely out of control. So, hopefully, Summon Sorcerers gets axed as well. Let's go ahead and see. Oh, it was so close, but it looks like Summon Sorceress is going to Unlimited, where everyone's only playing one anyway, so that really doesn't make too big of a difference. Now, there's one card we definitely have to talk about. It is the card that has probably polarized and divided the community more than any other card in this game. Maxi. Yes, we are gonna go back to Maxi one more time. We are going to pray to our divine overlords that Maxi will stay banned because that card has no right staying in this game whatsoever. Let's hope for the best. Maxi is going to one. It's not the worst thing that could happen, but I'm still not happy about it. So guys, that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Banless Roulette. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about what cards you think should be hit on this upcoming ban list. I really love to hear your thoughts. Tomorrow I'll be bringing you my actual ban list predictions as well as some more in-depth and analytical reasoning as opposed to leaving it up to sheer chance. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. And if you found this video entertaining, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.